I remember when I grew up, there was always something to collect as a kid. You had pogs, you had football cards, marbles, and I actually just remembered the Jojo toys. There were so many collectibles, but then, everything else was about to fade away when in 2000, Europe was introduced to Pokemon trading cards. Pokemon Master Trainer! Yes, I think I am! Then join the Pokemon Trading Card Game League! You'll do awesome activities, learn wicked strategies, earn killer badges, and meet new friends as you begin your journey to become a Pokemon Master Trainer! To find out more about the Pokemon Trading Card Game League, log on to wizards.com. Go forth and be a master! Kids went off the rails. It was pandemonium, anarchy and pure chaos. Everyone was collecting them and oh, those poor parents who had to pay for all those cards. Oh, good times. I remember having this kind of binder where me and my cousin would place all our Pokemon cards as we collected them together. One thing I will never forget is that as it was only the first generation of Pokemons that was released at the time, we only missed one single Pokemon card in our collection, a Poliwrath. If we had got our hands on that one, we would have a complete collection of the first generation of Pokemon trading cards and that would be amazing and probably valuable today. Now why do you talk about this? Well, as I said, we collected the cards, but we didn't actually know how to play with them, we just collected them. It wasn't until we came across a game for the Game Boy Color that we finally learned how to play the Pokemon trading card game. Oh, the music takes me right back. What an amazing soundtrack this game had. I would honestly claim that this game had the best soundtrack on the Game Boy Color overall. It just adds so much to the gaming experience. It has an upbeat and energetic tone to it, but at the same time, in such a soothing way that it doesn't really exhaust you in the long run either. You start the game off in the same fashion as most Pokemon games, by choosing your starting Pokemon. The difference is, this time you'll choose which deck to start off with, based on the starting Pokemons, Charmander, Squirtle and Bulbasaur. The game is very similar to the traditional Pokemon games as you'll have to collect 8 gym badges, here called Master Medals, before you take on the Elite Four and then the final battle against the Champion. As in the Pokemon tradition back in the days, you meet your rival from the get-go in the game, and he's just being an utter ass towards you. In this game, it's a boy called Ronald, and for some reason, he loves to yell when he speaks. <laughs> Don't make me laugh! Then you have to go to the Pokemon Dome and defeat all four of the Ground Masters there! There is no way you can do it! See ya, Cress! <laughs> Like, this is how I imagine him talking to me. What a weirdo! Well, anyways, each gym in this game, called clubs, have their own types of trading cards, just like the gyms in the traditional games all have specific types of Pokemon. The biggest and most obvious difference is of course the gameplay itself. You fight using cards, a concept that wasn't uncommon back then, and that seems to be just as popular today as for example with Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering, to name a few. As we didn't know how to play the trading card games back then, yes, we did struggle a bit to understand what to do in this game, but we did learn, and the more we learned, the more fun it became. It was also pretty cool to see our Pokemon cards in the actual game, as they are indeed identical to the physical Pokemon cards we collected, just 
of course, pixelated. You can have 60 cards in your deck, and you can mix and match as you want with the cards you have collected. Similar to using Pokemons that are strong against opposing gym leaders, you tweak your deck around depending on the club you are battling against. As for the battles themselves, you draw 7 cards from your deck and place any Pokemon available in the battle area. To be able to attack, you need to attach energy cards to the Pokemons equal to the requirements for the different attacks. You also have other cards that you can use to either heal your Pokemon, power up the attacks or shuffle new cards. You win by either collecting all the prizes that you put on the table, and this can vary from 2 to 6 prizes, or you can win if the opposing player don't have any Pokemons available in their drawn cards. To me, there are several things that makes this game a lot of fun. Fundamentally, the battles are really enjoyable, as you have to be really strategic to be able to win. Sometimes you might get lucky getting a Pokemon and the right energy card from the get-go, or you might have to use a Pokemon as cannon fodder as you prepare a stronger Pokemon in the back lines and make it ready to blast through the opponent's deck. A more controversial opinion might be that I also really enjoy the RNG of the game, as you don't really know which cards you'll be dealt at the beginning of a match, or what cards you get throughout the match either. It makes it a lot more exciting to play, but of course you can end up with a horrible hand and not being able to do anything for many, many turns. But you can't talk about Pokemon the trading card game without talking about the music. It is absolutely amazing, from the very title song until the very last bit. If you listen closely, you do notice that some of the music has taken some inspiration from the music from the red and blue games, which is, in my humble opinion, the best music in any Pokemon game to date. Especially when battling the Clubmaster, you can clearly hear it being inspired by the gym leader battle music from those games. Just listen to this. I can't stress it enough, the music is incredible. In total, just making a Pokemon game based on the real Pokemon cards and the way you were supposed to battle with them, translating the cards themselves into a pixelated Game Boy Color format, keeping them so familiar for us to recognize as these were the cards we actually had, was such a cool concept. I do honestly feel they did all the right things for this game. They kept the overworld graphics from the original Pokemon Red and Blue, which again made it feel like we were in fact playing just another ordinary Pokemon game. Other than the battles being card based, it was Pokemon as we knew it. Yes, there is a lot of luck involved and you need to be very familiar with every single card in the game to be able to play smart, but in the end you have full control over which cards you want to have in your deck, and building your deck in preparing for each club is an important part of the strategic planning. The game itself is pure enjoyment, pure joy, and the music is like a chef's kiss. Mwah! The cherry on top of an all-around amazing game. If you like Pokemon, and you like using your brain and be strategic, but at the same time, kind of realizing it's mostly down to RNG and luck, 
then you will love Pokemon the card game. The game did get a sequel as well, but sadly, this was only released in Japan. But as for the game, I'd give this a 9 out of 10 any day of the week. Check it out, I highly recommend it.